Hello everybody, thanks for being there. I know it's quite a long day. That's the last session of the day. Uh, I'm Simon, I'm software engineer at Red Hat. Hello, my name is Brian Borum. I, I'm also a software engineer. I work for Grafana Labs. We, we're going to do the wave. <laughs> uh, so we wanted to have a, a, a show of hands. Just uh, so who, who who's heard of Prometheus? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Is there anyone who's like totally new to to the community? We 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 won't bite. We nobody nobody's owning up to that. Okay. That's cool. Interesting. Uh, okay. Any. Uh, Let's, yeah, we wanted to, um, just in case, oh, you're going to do this. Yeah. yeah, just in case, if somebody was shy and didn't know about Prometheus before entering the room, um, just a quick, like, TLDR. Uh, Prometheus is like a complete monitoring metric-based solution. Uh, that means we offer solutions to instrument your applications via client libraries. We offer exporters to collect uh, system metrics. And we have the Prometheus server itself, which uh, would collect and store your metrics. It will also expose query and alerting APIs. And you got all that in a single binary, um, of course. Um, the key point regarding that conference, KubeCon, is that Prometheus is perfectly well suited for cloud native environments, especially one where Resources are, are very dynamic, so pods are moving very fast. And this is where Brian is going to explain a little bit how. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to put up an architecture diagram. Um, over on the left, we start with where the metrics come from. In Prometheus world, we call, we call all of those things exporters. That can be something talking to your infrastructure. You can get a node exporter, a Windows exporter, um, uh, Postgres exporter or something like that, or something, or your application itself can export metrics. Um, we collect the metrics, we talk to something like Kubernetes, the service discovery, we, we find out where everything is running, um, so you can figure that, and, uh, and then we store all the metrics in the TSDB, the time series database, that's the, um, the big uh, kind of resource hog of Prometheus. I was thinking, actually, it's a good thing everyone's into LLMs now because they make Prometheus look small, right? We should call it a large metric model, and uh, we could make billions, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so c continuing across the picture, uh, we have our query language, PromQL, um, and you can set up rules to for alerts if something goes wrong. Uh, Prometheus will has, does have a UI. It will draw graphs for you, but a lot of people use other products. Um, who knows what those, which, those might be. Which you're not allowed <laughs> to name, obviously. <laughs> so just a bit of history, because I, I find it interesting to know more about the inception of the project. So it started. 12 years ago, so quite a long time. Uh, it has joined CNCF in 2016, became graduated in two years later, right after Kubernetes. Uh, if you want to know more about like the, the project itself, how it grew uh, from the, the start, I recommend you, you go, you find on YouTube that Prometheus, the documentary video, very, like very interesting to watch. It's only 30 minutes, so you'll find the link on the presentation. Um, the numbers are at the bottom have been provided by Grafana Labs here present. Um, they sh basically, the numbers represent the number of Grafana installations that have at least one Prometheus data source. So we see quite a nice growth in the numbers and hopefully in the near future, we should be able to celebrate like our first million Prometheus installations. Okay, let's uh, just go through what happened in the last 12 months. Um, in 
Prometheus Prometheus, that's, that's the, the central uh, data store. Um, we made eight releases. Uh, so I think that, that's pretty good for a, a 12 year old project. Still releasing fairly steadily every six weeks. Um, we also have the LTS, long-term support uh, version of Prometheus. And uh, for that, that's for, for people who are a little bit more scared to take the latest version. Um, uh, we're just releasing patch releases to that. Uh, we also made, uh, you know, Prometheus project is not just Prometheus, the, the metric store, uh, the alert manager, the Java client declared 1.0 with a, a pretty big uh, re-architecture. Um, the Go client had very many releases and all the exporters that I mentioned earlier also uh, got released many times in the last year. Um, more specifically, uh, native histograms, I, I got a slide about that in a second. Um, we have an experimental open telemetry ingestion endpoint. Who, who was at the talk previous to this about open telemetry and okay a couple of people so you need to tell me what they said because I, I I I didn't go to that one um, the uh, the next one I as staleness that one sounds sounds kind of niche right but have you ever noticed when your container stops the metrics carry on for five minutes one person has noticed that okay two, two. three four people okay Trust me, it's annoying. Uh, anyway, this is the fix for that. You need to turn it on. Um, but go look, go check that out. You need to uh, turn on uh, the staleness for metrics that have their own timestamps. Um, I won't go through everything. Uh, we, we put a bunch of things in over the last 12 months. Um, native histograms, there have been a lot of talks about this if, if you not noticed, uh, the basic idea is, is that we move from very low resolution, kind of that blocky picture at the top to a very high resolution picture and they're more efficient. Um, so uh, they are still marked experimental in the code, but we, we have been working all year uh, on native histograms and uh, I would say, try them out, turn on that experimental feature flag and um, uh, make sure your clients are exporting them and um, yeah, give it a go, see what you think. Uh, what's big? Well, Prometheus is pretty big as I, as I noticed, but um, uh, it has got smaller. I gave a talk at the observability day six months ago, um, went into a lot of detail about that. Um, and there is another uh, thing that's supposed to knock another sort of 15% off the memory called dedupe labels. That is a very experimental uh, separate Docker tag. Um, so give that a go. That was, that was released yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's not released, it's experimental. But the, the, the version was stamped uh, yesterday. So uh, 2.51. Uh, plus dedupe labels. And so the future, because you've got lots of new things, but we, we want to go further. Uh, you may ha have heard about it, but uh, as we said, Prometheus is 12 years old, and we, like the team, said, okay, it might be the right time to cut a version 3 of Prometheus. Like version two was seven, more than seven years ago. Um, so here it will come. But the, the plan is to get it out by the end of the year, ideally in September or October. We, don't, we are not yet sure. If you want to know more about the details, we've got like a project on GitHub where you can track the different issues to know exactly what's going to be in. The gist of it is, we, like, like Brian said, we have lots of experimental features that, are, that have been added over time uh, and we feel like it's the right time to make that available for everybody because we've gained confidence that those things will not break or have, have been tested enough so that we can offer that for all users. 
It will also be the occasion for us to clean up a little bit some of our technical depth. Um, having said that, for people that, that went through the V1 to V2 migration, the idea is to do something a bit different, which would, like we anticipate for, for the vast majority of our users, that's going to be seamless. Like it, hopefully, it will be as simple as upgrading from a minor version to another. Like over the last year, we've, like, I think we have a pretty good record of not breaking people, uh, hopefully. If not, you tell us at the end. <laughs> uh, now, if we go a little bit um, into more into the details of what that entails. Um, we've seen over years open telemetry getting traction, obviously, uh, and we want Prometheus to become like the back end of choice for open telemetry if we, you want to use an open source solution. Uh, the, the main pain point right now for users is that when they ingest open telemetry metrics, the metric names and the label names might differ from what they configure or what they instrumented into open telemetry because Prometheus has some restrictions on the character sets. We want to drop that and there is work in progress for supporting any UTF-8 strings for metric names and label names. I've, we've put an example in the slide how that would look like from the PromQL point of view. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the plan so that it's going to be more natural for users to, to go from open telemetry to Prometheus. The other thing we mentioned is that we have an OTLP ingestion endpoint right now, which is again behind the feature flag. We want to make that available for everybody. Like you, you don't, you shouldn't have to configure it uh, to, to have it available. There are more to come. If you are interested, and I'm sure many of you are, um, I encourage you to go to our blog, uh, Prometheus blog. There is a post from last week by Gotham and Carrie from Grafana Labs, where they would go into all the details of what, has, what is being worked on right now. In the same like kind of um, area, we have native histograms. And again, the idea is that today you need a feature flag to get access to that. Prometheus V3 will be, you can ingest native histograms by default. And we also like want to make the migration from what we call classic histograms, as you know them right now, into native histograms, which are, which are much more efficient, kind of, again, seamless uh, for users. And same thing, we have like a GitHub milestone where you can track, if you're interested in that, all the progress. And the, another big, chunk of work that is happening right now is remote write, so V2, which is going to be confusing because we say Prometheus V3, but anyway. Um, remote write is a protocol that you can use to export metrics from your Prometheus. Typically, you would use that to send metrics to solutions like Cortex, Thanos, Mimir, or even to manage Prometheus services that all cloud providers now offers, offer to you. Uh, I won't go into the details, but the, like the main aspect, which is probably worth noting, are uh, we have ben network bandwidth and CPU optimizations that would greatly reduce like the cost of sending metrics over the wire for you. And last but not least, uh, we have like a refreshed UI in progress that's been working on by Julius, one of the Prometheus creators. Uh, this page on the screen is the, for people that know the existing UI, that's the alert page. So you, you will see that you will notice that it's not quite different from the current page, but it looks cleaner and nicer. So again, it's the idea that we are not going to change everything upside down, but we'll want to like make it even more efficient and nicer. Okay, back to me. Um, yeah, I want to speak a little bit about the community, uh, which includes you. Thank you very much for, for coming along so late in the evening. Um, it, since it started, Prometheus has hit 
12,000 and a bit commits, um, 872 contribute. Who's hands up if you if you made a con contribution, a PR or anything at all? Yeah, quite a few in in the room. And uh, and what we have some of the maintainers here. Do, can we get the maintainers to stand up? Who are here? <laughs> Augustin, Arthur, Arthur. Arthur. Arthur you, yeah. And, uh, and Simon and me are, are maintainers, if, if you hadn't figured that out. Um, uh, yeah, Arthur, Arthur is one of our newest uh, joining the team, one of the maintainers of the Client Go uh, library. So um, thanks very much for, for joining up. Um, and at this point, let, let me point out, we, this is a 35 minute session. We're trying to get through the slides quite quickly to give you time to ask questions. I don't want you to ask them right now. Stay. <laughs> but, you know, if you're thinking of a question or, or you have something in your mind, get, get that fully formed so we can get through those questions. Um, generally, uh, the best questions are ones that don't involve me knowing your config. Um, but uh, aside from that, um, we'll, we'll take questions on any, any aspect of the Prometheus ecosystem when we finish the slides. So, okay. Um, I, yeah, so this topic is about uh, something that someone was talking to me at the Prometheus booth yesterday, and I, I thought this would be a good thing to um, highlight. Uh, so you can come along to the Prometheus repo or any one of our um, few dozen uh, repos around the project, uh, and you can make your request. Like, you know, I would like Prometheus to do this. I would like Client Go to do that. Um, when you do that, you are the product manager, right? Because there's no company behind Prometheus. There's no Prometheus Inc. I don't have shares, uh, and we did not hire any product managers. So um, I think, just think about it that way. You, you need to advocate for the feature. Maybe you need to find someone to implement it. Um, but uh, we are all volunteers uh, working on the Prometheus project. So um, uh, that said, we, we would love more volunteers. We'd love more contributors. Uh, we are working on a, a governance refresh um, to make it easier to have uh, to people to sort of move up through the ranks of the project, make that clearer. Um, so do uh, do come along. Uh, yeah. And the best way to start is tomorrow, in fact. So we've got four experienced Prometheus developers that offer you to to attend a contrib fest. Um, they will be there to help you. There is a topic like they have some ideas of what they want to do, but I'm sure that they will be also delighted if you have like you come with an issue and you say, hey, can I work on that? Can I submit a pull request? Can you help me? Show me how it works. They will be, yeah, very happy to, to help you. Um, obviously, we have like events, um, regular events like we have Prometheus Dev Summits which are open to everybody again it's not only for the maintainers uh, you can find on the website our calendar with all the different um, events that we organize uh, virtually and hopefully in September we'll add another PromCon again probably in Berlin we hope and we hope to see many of you there that's a bit different from this type of conference because they are, it's really smaller. Uh, it's kind of a, we, we like to call it like a family gathering in a way. Yeah. So again, don't be shy. Um, I think tomorrow is a great way to like start contributing to the projects. And I think we are done for our part. Now your questions, please. Yeah. Shall we? Uh, oh. Who's, are you, you're gonna, mm. okay. Hello, um, you said you are supporting a native histogram format. Will that require a new exposition format from things that publish metrics? Yes, so 
if you want to expose native histogram right now, you have to basically upgrade to a recent version of the, the Prometheus client library that would exp offer that. And the exposition format is a bit different because instead of being text format, that's going to be protobuf, which would works better for that kind of uh, representation of histograms. Um, there is an ID floating that you should be able to still expose the kind of classic histograms, but have them stored, and I'm speaking under the control of Bartek, obviously, <laughs> that, that uh, you should be able to, like the Prometheus server should be able to save that in the format of the native histograms, so that you can still get the performance improvements that come with native histograms, but yes. The, I guess right now the client Golang supports native histograms, Java client 2, yeah. And there should be a way also from the open telemetry SDK to convert that to uh, their exponential ex histograms into Prometheus native histograms too. Hey, thank you. Great work, by the way, and great presentation. Um, uh, you mentioned that UTF-8 charts will be available, uh, supported, and metric names and label names. So open telemetry metrics names will be fully supported. However, there's still a difference. Will we still be required to add the unit uh, as a suffix uh, and mean metric names? I, I think we don't know. I, I think there is a, I I'm, I'm think I've commented on an issue about that in, I mean, that's strictly speaking an open telemetry issue. Because uh, everyone wants a standard, right? They, they want to sign up to the standard and, and not have people like me mess around with the code. Um, but the, the standard gets, it lays down something that is kind of inconvenient, like you have to, um, you have to change all the dots into underscores or something like that. So, uh, so we say, okay, we're going to change Prometheus so you don't have to, because Prometheus used to ban the, the dot, the full stop character. Uh, that's why that was done. And um, so we take away that restriction, but now somebody has to go change the standard, right? It has to go through governance of the standard. And so basically the same question for units. Um, and it's a little bit more complicated because uh, you, there, there are corner cases where you can have the same metric, two, two metrics that are identical except for the unit. I mean, that's not a great idea, but, but apparently that's supported by the software. And um, uh, so if we stopped adding the unit to the name, it would um, break. But uh, uh, your question is a very good one, and I, there is work in progress. Um, I just don't know what the outcome of the work is. Yeah, it's still open question. Uh, but the other point is that the PromQL system, like uh, if you look on recording crawl, you want to see the metric unit immediately. There is no like system, especially if you look in your YAML, to like expand it to exactly what unit it is. So there are lots of benefits to actually keep the unit. And there are really no good reason to remove it other than maybe some data duplication. So it's literally, yeah, discussion among maintainers. And uh, yeah, please bring your uh, arguments as well. But let's see. Thank you. Any other question? I'm sure there are a lot. Thank you for the presentation. I have a fun topic, open metrics and exemplars and exposition formats. So what's the status of open metrics? And I'm mostly interested in exemplars. So should we just, I don't know if the protobuf exposition format for supports it? It does? Okay. Yeah. Um, so just open metrics, what's the status of it and whether we should care about it or not and so on. So yeah, in fact, there are like three standards in a way that Prometheus supports or will be supporting. It's Prometheus, Prometheus format, open metrics format, which is, has some particularities which are a bit different from the Prometheus format. And there are open telemetry, obviously. Um, the idea is that, yeah, we would, we want to support exemplars for everything, for in all cases, but there are challenges right now for native histograms is how many exemplars are you going to store in the database, uh, given that you have much more buckets than before, for instance. 
Um, now back to open metrics. Um, the like the idea is that the open metrics itself is going to be uh, to land into the Prometheus organization, and we we that way will be more flexible and make it evolve so that it's going to be like not stuck on a previous version of the of the form of the standard, but uh, will adapt to all the new new things that we are envisioning. Yeah. Yeah. So future is bright. Um, you did not mention it, but I have heard whispers about remote read. Yes or no? Is it going to be better than remote write? Well, remote read, do you want to take it, Bartek? Oh. Better in what sense? <laughs> oh, it's just to be uh, <laughs> on edge. Uh, just uh, what thoughts have you been putting into it? No, no, it's a good question. So uh, I think it's well used and when well matured. Like we added like a streaming to it like very, very long time ago, like two, 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 two years ago uh, for Thanos purposes and other kind of uh, projects. Um, I don't think there are like any plans for that other than just making sure it's stable and uh, very well versioned. There are lots of plans for remote ride, by the way, like we are evolving and there will be a remote ride to zero version as well. And um, yeah, so stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, remote read is going to stay. I mean, it's not because we have a new version of Prometheus that it's going away. Um, but yeah, I don't think they are like, unless you have specific use cases, like where you would see improvements. Um, I think everything is workable. Yeah. Okay, we have a question from very, very far away. Hello, thanks. Um, Hello. I wondered if you have done any thinking or work related to large scale and sh uh, sharding um, in particular, maybe sharding of data that's being um, scraped and whether there's going to be anything client side to make that a kind of a standard or, um, or an another kind of service discovery related issues related to, you know, scraping large amounts of data without a, a single Prometheus failing. Can I take that one? If you want. Um, yeah. Oh. So, uh, if in terms of, of splitting up the data across multiple Prometheus, um, there, we have the hash mod operator, uh, which will let you um, automatically uh, shard targets across a, set, a fixed number of Prometheus. Um, if your question is about one single target, which is too big for the Prometheus to handle, uh, nope. Um, nobody, I believe, has worked on that. And uh, oh, Yeah, I mean, we, we have only two cases when we see this, CubeSit metrics, and they essentially create their own instrumentation that's, that solves it. Like, you can shard it manually. You can say, CubeSit metrics, give me essentially free replicas, and that will be sharded for you. And I know Istio might have some kind of like uh, problems like that, but then they have like a very customizable uh, telemetry you can configure. So we didn't see any need for like a, something standardized, maybe some instrumentation or even Prometheus or open metrics specific. But please, if you have this problem, like literally put issue on Prometheus, and we want to highlight that, there are solutions, just which wasn't pressing enough. Yeah, on target sharding, we had Arthur and Nicola did a talk on Tuesday, which is going to be available soon, about using the op Prometheus operator to shard targets automatically. So I recommend that you watch it if you did. We are not present. Yeah. Question. Any question left? Hmm. Going once. Twice. Yeah. Oh, one oh, oh. <laughs> just in time. Good. I mean, I wasn't sure if I wanted to ask it, but given you were all right. Let's say Prometheus 3.0 hits. How is the Prometheus operator project handled? In is like the timelines are they aligned? If 3.0 hits, then it's when Prometheus operator starts running. So I can probably take it because I'm Prometheus operator maintainer. Um, Right now we have like we follow the same schedule than Prometheus itself. So we have six weeks between each release. We just have a little offset so that we can just wait for Prometheus release to be available to publish the operator. Um, again, the philosophy, general philosophy of Prometheus V3 is that we are not going to break lots of things. So that should work again like 
mostly the same, hopefully. Uh, we don't have all the details how the release will happen, like how many release candidates we'll need to have, etc. But I'm sure we'll work out something, like maybe we need some range in the operator itself just to test in advance that it's going to work fine. But yeah, I don't see big blockers there. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Last question. Still room for that? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for speaking. Yeah, thank you.